down. So many questions to be answered. Let's get to ringside our commentary team for the big one, Glenn McCrory and first Ian Dark. The man in charge will be a gentleman who has now, by the end of this fight, officiated in 71 world title fights, our very own Mr. Stanley Christodoulou. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing on my left, He's wearing the blue and gold trunks. He weighed in at 75.45 kilograms. He has a fight record of 31 contested fights. He's won 30 of them. He's only drawn one. He goes by the name of Dangerous Dan Shomba. And the draw was against the former Olympian Israel Cole. His opponent tonight, a gentleman who needs no introduction, not only to the world of boxing, but in world sport today. He's wearing the yellow trunks. His weight is 76.2 kilograms. He has a fight record of 40 contested fights, 38 wins, he's only drawn two. He is the reigning WBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Chris, simply the best, Eubank! Eubank making his 13th defense of this title. Will 13 be unlucky? It's his fifth fight of 1994, Thank this one. Let's have a good fight, shake hands, good luck to you both. Thank you. The referee is one of the best in the world, in my book, Stanley Christodoulou, who's from South Africa. Okay. It's the fourth time he's refereed a Eubank fight. He handled the ones against John Jarvis, Lindell Holmes and Tony Thornton. The bell goes with a cameraman still in the ring. Well, that's quite extraordinary from one of the uh, local broadcasting companies. Never seen that before. Now, Shoma unbeaten in 31 contests. How good is he? He still looks to have just a little bit of flab around him. He's... Uh, successful businessman he's a part-timer he's really been a club fighter though he's won a lot he hasn't beaten anybody much this is a massive test for him he starts as a big underdog can he shock Eubank of whom there have been question marks about his preparation well Eubank he totally unsettles people because they don't really know what to do with him you know already Shoma you know at the very beginning when Eubank stood there with his hands dropped just stood there pawing away at him so they just the opponents never know what to make of Chris Eubank. This is the third Southpaw that Eubanks faced this year. Rocky Gianni and Sam Story, the others. Story, who was beaten in the last fight in the seventh round. It's the first time Eubank had stopped anybody, though, for over two years. How positive will Eubank be on this away day? The word on Schomer is that despite the general feeling that he's a limited fighter he does have a bit of a dig can punch a bit with either hand but Eubank of course above anything else is renowned for the uh, rock-like nature of his chin you've always got to respect an undefeated fighter Ian you know, we, we never really know what they're all about you, know, you can question his opponents you can question anything but you know he's never lost so you know, there's no answer to that. Schoenberg was very realistic about this job. When I spoke to him at some length the other day, he was saying, I know I'm not going to get a close decision to take this title away. I've got to do it decisively and keep up a good work rate. And that wasn't a bad left hand from Schoenberg. One of the big criticisms of Eubank is that he only fights for one minute in three every round. It's a cautious beginning from him here. Just uh, watching, sizing up what's in front of him. I don't think he knew a whole lot about Dan Schoma going into this. But that's how he approaches all his tasks, and he's unbeaten in 41 contests so far. Good work from Schoma. Southpaw jab, left hand. 
Yes, he's had a bit of success. The the corner give a shout there when he landed with a with a left jab. He's throwing a bit more leather than Eubank in this opening round. Conring is Conring. Show, Mickey. What's going on? What's going on? A typically cautious start from Eubank. They're just uh, a little bit worried about a slight swelling underneath his left eye by the look of it. It's nothing much. I don't know. There wasn't much in that opening round, but Shoma seemed to throw out a bit more leather to me. Maybe he took that opening round. Not much happened in it, to be frank with you. Second round here. Can this American shock Eubank? Well, as usual, Eubank has done very little in the opening round, so we, we, it's very hard to get a guy. But Shoma, look, he had quite fast hands. He, he tried to get his shots off. The jab looked quite fair. They've got one common opponent, Ron Malek, who Shoma beat in two rounds. Eubank took five. That was quite a long time ago, to be fair. Eubank does have this way, though, of seeming to know exactly what he has to do to win. And he can psych his opponents as well, looking for that right hand there over the top. Just a bit busier in this second round, Eubank. First impressions of Shoma, Glenn? Not bad. He's... He He's, he looks okay, looks rather capable. He's getting his jab to work. He doesn't seem overly phased in this fight. He's trying a few things. <laughs> and the, the, the thing is, we haven't seen Eubank do anything yet. He's having a good long look at Dan Shoma. I asked Shoma what his style was. He said, I'm a stick and move kind of fighter. I prefer to counter punch. And so too, of course, as Eubank, so um, let's hope they don't get too negative. Both waiting for the other to lead. <laughs> Remember, we're fighting here at nearly 5,000 feet, and Eubank's uh, sparring partner, Ray Webb, was telling me that fighting for five rounds here is like fighting 10 rounds anywhere else. That's how he put it, anyway. But both men have had to travel a long way for this fight. So I think the, the problems are going to hit either man the same. But Eubank's had a lot longer here to get acclimatised. Good right hand from Eubank there. Showed fast hands and then got away out of range. This is the third stop on the Eubank World Tour in which he will attempt to defend his title eight times in a year. Shoma did have one very good win when he was an amateur. He beat Virgil Hill, the current uh, world light heavyweight champion Eubank into his full posturing and it's not going down exceptionally well with the Sun City crowd here <laughs> difficult round to score that one it was I thought it was an even round they both tried to look for spaces with the with the jab neither man had any good shots that went in it's a very careful opening from from Eubanks he's having a good look at this fellow okay there is Dan Shoma. He works as a broker in the petroleum equipment business, earns good money. That um, raises the question, really, of how hungry he is for glory as a boxer. But he says he's waited a long time for this chance. He's on $50,000, which isn't a massive payday by world championship standards, certainly alongside the kind of money Eubank 
has been earning. He's been staying at a place called the Palace. Well, he would, wouldn't he? He would, yes. Third round. Frankly, Eubank hasn't done an awful lot so far. No, he's done very little. He's been very careful. He hasn't rushed in. He took no chances. He's let the right hand go, but he's been well short with it. One problem Eubank has had in uh, a couple of his recent fights has been cuts. He was cut against Ray Close and Maurizio Amaral this year, and he cut his lip in sparring uh, last weekend. Right, go back. Shoma has been saying in the build up to this fight there's no way Eubank is going to outbox me I've watched videos of him over and over again he can't outbox me well that's an interesting claim It is interesting, and he is getting through with some shots. He has got quite fast hands. Both waiting for each other to lead, hoping for the counter punch. Oh, it's a good right hand from Eubank. He's landing the heavier shots by the look of it so far. They're very spasmodic. Shoma relying almost exclusively on that southpaw jab. Because he's working more with the jab, just seems to be beating Eubanks to the jab. I mean, he doesn't look especially slick, does he, or smart, Shoma. There's something quite ponderous about him, really. There is, I think, physically, he looks ponderous, but his hands are a little bit faster than he looks. And I think that, that is just upset Eubank at this early point. I think he'll be looking for the big right hand, that's his favourite shot. And it's a good shot against the southpaw. He's making Shoma miss quite a lot in this round. Scoring with the jab. Eubank, Shoma comes back with his own left hook, though. claims that he will always do just what he has to do to keep on winning and keep the money rolling in and move on to the next stopover. Is this going to be another of those nights, you wonder, where we have uh, controversy and contention? Well, I'm sure Dan Shoma and his camp there, Joe Daskowitz in the corner, and his son Chuck will be quite happy with things so far. There can't be a lot in it because, frankly, neither of them have landed too much. That's right. I think they'll be very pleased with him, man. He's he's doing a good job. He said he was a counter puncher. You know, he's going to try and make Eubanks make the mistakes. And I think that's a you know a good ploy. Why should he? You know, he's not going to try and be excited and, and run into to Eubanks' right hand. One thing I've seen, though, time and again from Eubank is his ability to lift things when he feels the need arises. And he's often pulled away in the closing stages of his fights. They've often been pretty level affairs for the first seven or eight rounds. By the way, the judges here, two from Puerto Rico, one from South Africa. Eubank scored three knockdowns in his last fight against Sam Story. There was nothing wrong with his performance on that occasion. Just uh, touching gloves there. They've been uh, 
Very sportsmanlike in the build up, these two. No phony ballyhoo or anything like that. In fact, I think they even had a chat at breakfast the other morning. You wonder when that's happening if Chris Eubank's in danger of becoming a Mr. Nice Guy. Well, he's made a lot of money, out, hasn't he, out of being the guy people love to hate. So then it, it makes you wonder if, if, if a fighter changes, is he losing his hunger for the game? Well, he's talked about retirement, hasn't he? he After this uh, world tour is finished, whether he goes through with that, I think he does love the stage. Well, Dan Schumer, at this point, is counting well. He's not taking anything on Julie, and he's using his jab. Typical Eubank fight so far in the early stages. Very cautious in feeling his way into it, assessing the task. Good fight, punch from Schumer. The left hand, Eubank just covering up. For a little bit. Yes, that one landed and it was a good left hand. Sean was also tying Eubanks up inside. He's not allowed to work. This is Eubanks' 18th consecutive world championship fight in under four years at two weights, middle and super middleweight. Out of range, Eubank. Well, I think Sherman is doing more of the work at this stage. Now, one or two boos from Eubank from the back of the hall. Yes, I think Sherman, that was Sherman's round. He did the better work. He just, there was nothing spectacular there, but he landed with a couple of decent shots and he kept picking away with that jab and that stealing points. And Eubank has got to be careful. By that left hand lead, but don't throw it unless you're in balance. And you're in range. Joe Daskowitz doing the talking. He's been a boxing it, coach since he was 17, and he's now 70, back. and he's never had a world champion nice yet. Handled the, uh, the heavyweight of about a decade ago, Scott Ledoux, who fought Larry Holmes for the World Heavyweight Championship. The son Chuck in the corner with him, and Joe Schomer, who's Dan's brother. Schirmer has had a lot of managerial problems. He's had hand problems as well. Three operations on his left hand. He also had uh, nine stitches in his face after his car hit a deer. But not too many cuts in the ring. Fifth round. Well, there's very little action, but the best of the boxing, you've got to think, has come from Shoma. Just a little bit sharper. I'm sure if we interviewed Eubank at this very moment, he would tell us he was in complete control of things and knew exactly how he was going to win this fight. But once again, it's the old problem, isn't it, with him? And, and why he's caused so much controversy with the judging of his fights, he simply doesn't do enough work. He doesn't. He's content just to sit back and let the other man take the lead and you know, just try and steal enough. Eubanks hardly used his jab. If he really is tight at the weight, and if it has been so much of a struggle, he's had to fast for the last three days. He's hardly had a drink. He was doing exercises by the swimming pool on Thursday. If he has got a problem, if he is now becoming weak at this weight from his preparations, which really only last about a week for these fights, maybe sometime soon it is going to catch up with him. Whether Shoma's good enough to be that man, we'll find out. 
Well, at this moment, Eubank is not looking sharp. At times, he's looking a little bit cumbersome. So we've seen that right hand go out and miss badly. I think Shoma's growing in confidence out there. A little smile playing around his lips there. That wasn't a bad right to the body, though, from Eubank. Oh, and another one to the head. Now, this is better work. Shoma's caught once more. Eubank just steps up the pace a little. And two more punches go in from the champion. Shoma got one back. He's out of range with that. And I think they're talking to each other in there. Shoma just did give a little nod. I think Eubank had said something to him. Eubank desperately needs to pick up the pace. Even by his standards, it's been uh, a lethargic opening four rounds. It is, he's very lethargic. And even when he lands a shot, Shoma has been allowed to come back with a couple of his own. And that was a, a very wild right hand. Okay. He was looking at the canvas Watch when he threw that one. Bank. at the moment it has to be said if we're honest with you is not going down a storm in Sun City it's Shoma it's nothing, it's just a, it's looks as though he's just got a little bit of a some kind of swelling underneath okay, Dan, the right eye just find him like you're doing you're countering is countering and you're doing a good job there we see Shoma doing some of the work there he's getting some good work off Eubank just can't lift himself when he does. He looks sluggish, and he's just not on target. Five rounds gone. Dan oh, yeah. Shoma, just okay, a little bit just, worried about the swelling underneath the right eye, though. It's nothing much. Says he's promised fights with uh, Tommy Hearns, Iran Barkley, Darren Van Horn, Jeff Harding, Virgil Hilbert. He never, ever got those chances now he has at the age of 34 shown up now I think Eubanks corner may have told him that he has to start taking control of things out there a bit Good counter punch from Shoma yes Eubanks got to pick it up he's on the world stage is a big place for him to really shine and at the moment he's, he's drawn boos from the crowd Getting untidy. And this is an interesting phase of the fight here. You sense that Eubank knows he needs to do a bit more. And what answers will Shoma have when that happens? Again, Shoma beat Eubank to the counter. Corner shouting out to Shoma to double up on his jab, not just throw single punches. But at least he's jabbing, Eubank isn't. Yes, he is the one that's scoring, with, scoring points. a good right hand from Eubank overhand right landed it looked around the bridge of the nose the temple line, sent the sweat spraying from Shoma's head but at the moment these successes for Eubank are pretty spasmodic I think Eubank has, has really got to take a couple of steps forward. He's got to try and get Shoma, trap him in the corner, trap him on the ropes, and let a few more shots go. He's letting them, he's trying for that right hand, but it's a single shot. He's got to try with the left, the right, and come back with the left too. He's got to put them together. Now he's using the jab. He was out of range with it. Again, it's a difficult round to score. Shoma's worked quite well behind his jab, but Eubank's landed the best punch of the round with that right hand. He tried it again there, didn't find the target this time. Shoma was wise to it.
This could be quite a tough assignment for Eubank, the way things are shaping. Well, he seems to be having trouble puzzling this one out. Halfway point of the contest. Another close-ish round. Just a face off. Okay. Okay. Ice, ice. Danny, you stay with me. Use the upper car. You're not using the upper car now. You're going to close him down, right? We're at the halfway point of this contest in Sun City. Chris Eubank there in some earnest discussions in his corner with Ronnie Davis, his trainer. Now, on my scorecard at the moment, I've got Shoma a couple of rounds ahead here. What about you, Glenn? How are you seeing it? I've got Shoma exactly the same, two rounds ahead. He's doing the better work. He's picking up with a jab. Eubanks is trying to get that big right hand up, but it's not working. And when he misses, Shoma's coming back with his own little slick counters. He did score with a... A good right hand in that last round, Eubank, but it was one right hand against some quite good work from the jab from uh, Shoma. Shoma from Minneapolis in Minnesota. That's a better right hand from Eubanks there. He's got to try and pick it up in this round. That's a good left hand from Schumer again, who's smiling at Eubank. He said he'd be completely unfazed by anything Eubank did, his posturing, his ring entrance. He said, as far as I'm concerned, he can take his shorts off in the ring. It won't worry me. Well, we can see Eubank, he's talking to Schumer there, so I think he's getting a bit frustrated. He's trying to get Schumer to, to do a little bit more. He wants Schumer to make a mistake, but a good right hand there from Eubank. He's having success with that, and Shoma will have to watch that. And a decent left hook to the body from Eubank as well. Contest warming up in the middle stages. Both landing with decent headshots. Maybe the phony war is over here now. Shoma's doing well, he's not been fazed. Caught with the right, he staggered by the right. Lost balance that time. Well, that's a bad sign for the American and the best sign yet for Eubank. He caught Shoma a little off balance with the right hand and seemed to stagger him. He did. Shoma's smiling. I'm not sure if he just stepped backwards and got caught as he retreated or whether it was that good a shot. He does carry a very good punch, Eubank when he chooses to use it. But he hasn't got to rely on it too much. I think, we, you know, he'd do better if he, he brought more into it. He came behind the jab, behind the right hand, then threw a left hook. He's got to try and mix it up a little bit. Eubank's being called on here to dig a little bit deep and show some of the fighting qualities that, to be fair to him, have got him through every time he's hit a crisis in the past. He has been in a lot of mediocre fights, to be honest with you. But he's also been in a handful of very, very good ones. That was Eubank's best round yet. He'll have taken that one. At last, Chris Eubank moved into some kind of gear there. And... Um, well, he's been staying here in an 1,800-pound-a-night suite with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a jacuzzi, sauna, a lounge. He's got his own personal barber, but I think now he realises that he's here in Sun City for a real contest. Yes, it is, and there's that right hand. It's a good shot, and it, it did stagger him. I wasn't sure about it. Shoma was moving away, but 
Eubank threw a good right hand. But you're screwing them up after you're jabbing and jabbing. The scorecard that I have at the moment has Shoma one round ahead. That was Eubank's best round, that seventh, though. And uh, he shook Shoma, and I wonder if that might be a sign of things to come. There are five rounds remaining. Eubank, you could bet, will be looking for that right hand honey punch again. If Eubank has had problems with the weight, though, you'd expect it to catch up with him in the second half of the fight. We'll watch that with interest. You would, but the, the pace of the fight, it's not a hard-fought fight. It's more, it's a thinking fight, so you wouldn't think he'd be, he'd be that drained. Yes, good work from Shoma. He avoided the right hand and got him with three or four of his own. Three-punch combination again from the American. And again, Eubank gives him a little nod of appreciation. Yes, Eubank just doesn't have the answer this morning. Oh, left hook was a good one, though, from Eubank. And look at Shoma's answer to it. This is hotting up now. Eubank's talking to him. You feel he's doing that because he wants Shoma to make a mistake. He wants Shoma to commit himself. Shoma's counterpunching too much for Eubank, and he's having a bit of trouble trying to understand this style. So he's talking on, I feel, to try and draw him over, try and goad him into doing something, goad him into making a mistake. Mentioned that, oh, left hand again. I mentioned that Eubank's lip was cut in sparring. I think it's beginning to seep blood again now. Good round, this one. Probably the best of the fight so far. Shoma has been showing some real fighting qualities in there. Lanning with several good combinations like that. Eubank shakes his head as if to say, didn't hurt me, but they were scoring punches. Great right, short one from Eubank. Again, Shoma waves him in. And Shoma is taking that right hand well when he has to. And after a slow start, the plot is thickening here rather nicely. It certainly is, and the quality that I like about Shoma so much is he's shown a good boxing brain. And he's starting to throw his punches in clusters, isn't he, now? Eubank has landed with a couple of cracking shots of his own in this round. Left hook and a short little right, but Shoma has landed with any number of combinations, and he won that round for my money. Watching Sky Sports. Wouldn't it be nice if your boss was always pleased to see you? Mm. And it wasn't always sandwiches for lunch. Wouldn't it be nice if you had the time to talk to all your customers? Get to know them better because you can call them anywhere in the country at any time of the day without getting hung up on the cost. BT have abolished their highest rate for national calls. A three-minute call now only costs 30 pence in the daytime, 20 pence in the evening, and still 10 pence at weekends. Hello. Things are looking up already. It's a real problem with some traditional powders, but not with aerial colour. It's got a unique Colour Plus system. The bleaching agents have been taken out and they've put in Colour Safe stain digesters. To prove it, I was asked to try it. After just one wash, Aerial Colour got the chocolate out, unlike some other powders. The more it's cleaned, the more it fades. But with Aerial Colour, it's clean and still green, even after 20 washes. So, to get your whole wash clean, don't change your colours, change your washing powder. We did, didn't we? Yeah! Aerial Colour digests stains without bleaching out colours. Just look at it. Yeah. 
Thank heavens for the tumble dryer. Yeah, but mine's not the same as drying outdoors. Have you ever dried mount? Sylvia, something funny's happening inside your dryer. Talk about the bounce. The bounce? Hey, it's not all stuck together. And it smells great. Don't tell me. Nothing with the bounce. Bounce, like drying outdoors, indoors. With a car this special, we don't need to shout. If you'd like to know more, please turn up your volume now. Inside, no screw is visible. Door clunk tuned to satisfy. Rain gutters keep side windows clear. Organ style accelerator pedal. Aerodynamic rear bumpers keep lights mud free. Different sized wing mirrors improve rear vision. Wiper motor designed to be quiet. Grease free door hinges. Power windows work with ignition off. Touch panel on door handle absorbs static. The Mazda Casados 6. Every detail matters. Please return your volume to its normal level. Tonight in the next generation, Worf is having delusions of reality. How long have I been married to Councillor Troy? Two years, one month, and 12 days. Nothing aboard the Enterprise is as it should be. Is Jordy well enough to answer a few questions? Jordy's dead. And Worf is a long way from home. Mr. Worf does not belong in our universe. What? Have we been aboard a different Enterprise for the last six years? Other realities are emerging into our own. Star Trek, the next generation, tonight at 8, followed by Highlander on Sky One. Welcome back. Bottom That's line. my Bottom very line. unofficial reading of the fight. I have Shoma a couple of rounds ahead at this point. It's um, it's looking a bit dodgy for Christopher Livingston Eubank. But it has before, hasn't it? Many times. Round nine. What next? Shamworks was pretty impressive in that eighth round in little cameos. He certainly was. He showed a good boxing brain. And when he got hit, he did the right things. And he seems as if he takes a good shot. Eubanks talking to him again. Sharp right hand. Once again, Eubank in trouble in defense of his world championship. Where have you heard that before somewhere? <laughs> oh, cracking left hand from Shoma. Eubank just seems to soak up punches so easily. Eubank calling Shoma in after that. Punch. He wants Shoma to make a mistake, but as yet he isn't making any. That's a very clever fight. Well, when this fight was first announced, there were those who derided Shoma as just a club fighter who hadn't fought anybody and said he'd be desperate Dan Shoma. He calls himself dangerous Dan Shoma, and that's been nearer the mark, to be fair. Eubank pull it out of the fire again. Wouldn't you just love to know how the judges are seeing it as well? Sean was moving around the ring, he's carrying his hands dangerously low. Good combination from Eubank. I'd like to see Eubank use the jab a bit more and try and double up the jab. Eubank must up the work rate, the passion and the intensity. Shome has done less in this round. Eubank's... He looks more positive, he's trying to walk forward more, but he's just not getting his shots off as good. 
I think three to the body there, though. Three to the body, but Shoma comes back with his left hand and then nods at Eubank as if to see a one, another one for you. Well then, we've told you how we're seeing this fight. What about Dave McCauley, the former world flyweight champion, IBF version, watching in London? Dave, how are you scoring this? Well, at this moment in time, Ian, I have Schumer in front, but you keep saying there's Newbank looks a wee bit lethargic. You'd, you wonder if all these, these problems with the weight are true, because he looks a wee bit lethargic there, and there seems to be no spark in his work at all, and he's lunging forward, his timing seems to be off. It's either that or, or he's peaked too soon in the gym, but he has to up the work rate now, because he's quite a few rounds behind now, and at this fight, goes a distance, he's going to have to operate the work now to get a few more rounds behind him so as he can, he, he can go out with a points victory at least. Because this guy seems to have a real good chin too. He's, Eubank has caught him a few times right on the button and he stood and he's looked at him. He hasn't worried him at all. Tenth round, interesting to hear Dave McCauley there say he has Eubank several rounds behind. I've got it a bit closer than that I must say, but I do have Schomer in front at this stage. Eubank certainly needs a big finish. For, for me, Eubank won the last round and he's trying to put the pressure on. He's trying to up the pace a little bit now. That last one was a difficult one to score. Maybe Eubank just did nick it. I wouldn't give you much of an argument about it. This is the 10th. Quite a challenge here from the man from Minneapolis whose own local paper didn't even bother to send a reporter to cover him. That's how highly they regarded his chance. Well, they might be going a little bit higher at this stage. Just dabbed his eye then, Schumer, as if he thought he was cut. He doesn't look as if he is. Well, I think he may have took a, a little clash of heads or something then. He's just you know, having a feel. It's the first impulse you do if something like that happens. You look for blood. Oh, again the right hand, but look at the counter punch from Shoma. He had the answer. That was a good right hand. Sweats sprayed off his head, but he came straight back with shots. He takes a good punch, Shoma. Body shots from Eubank this time. He's just beginning to step up the pace, as indeed he needs to. me he makes hard work of some of these defenses oh again the right hand he's just starting to find the distance with that punch better round for Eubank this one Never been beaten, remember, Chris Eubank. Just two draws against 39 wins. The draws against Ray Close and Nigel Benn. This is a lot better round for Eubank. He's starting to land well, and he's got the range of that right hand. Shoma has had to take more in this round. He has scored with his counters, but at last, Eubank is working hard and throwing some leather. That was Eubanks round, I think. Yes, that was a good round for him. He was strong throughout. He kept the, the pressure on continuously and it paid dividends. The, the right hand landed a few times and that was a, a good scoring round for him. Dan Schomer putting up a great show here though. His previous highest purse was $3,500, tonight $50,000. There was that right hand from Eubank. It was a good punch, but the counter was good too from the American. Stay on him. Work him over, work him over these men. He's going to work. work Schumer is going to go work. beyond 10 rounds here for the first time. 
so much. Oh, he's had the win. He was looking a little bit tight in that round. He had to do a, an awful lot of backpedaling. Have we seen the best of Shoma? Is Eubank starting a big finish to come and nick it on the line? Eubank's come back quite well in the last couple of rounds. I've got this level now. How about you, Glenn? I've got exactly the same. Two good rounds for Eubanks. He's still trying a little bit too much of that right hand. And if, if Eubank or his corner knows, Shoma is going round the same way all the time. He's going away from the right hand. And they should have told him to start. Maybe he's fading the right and throwing a left hook. He's got to try something different. Oh, Shoma steps it up again himself. Shoma, you feel, needs a good round here in this 11th. Still good counter-punching from Shoma. Inside the last two rounds. Shoma showing his experience. I mentioned Eubank being unbeaten. Of course, Shoma is himself so far. Whatever happens now, Shoma can look back on with some pride on his performance here. Yes, up till now he hasn't fell into any traps. It's been a good boxing performance. Shem is doing quite well again in this 11th round so far. Eubank just breathing a little harder. He's had to make quite an effort to get back into the fight and has that taken its toll remember we are fighting at altitude 5,000 feet sorry to labor that point it's worth repeating this is a good round for Shoma absolutely on a knife edge you back walking that knife edge again Well, I think Shoma might have done enough to take that one. I agree. I thought that was a, a good boxing round for him. He allowed Eubank to, to chase him, to come after him in the ring. And he just counted well. Just single shots, little snappy one-twos, just enough to take the round for me. Well, my unofficial scorecard has Dan Shoma winning this fight by one round with one round to go so it could all depend on the last three minutes here it's got to be close hasn't it i would think in on most of the scorecards you it's would think be, uh, to me it's got to be very very close but of course shoma was telling us beforehand he didn't expect to win if it came to a closest de decision that's right so you've, you've got to expect him if the corner think it's close you've got to expect him to try something very big in this round they touch gloves. Three minutes left of this one. They both desperately want to take this last round. Eubank letting the punches fly. Right, left hook. Shoma stays with him. Good covering up by Eubank. I think they probably landed on the gloves. Though it was hard from our angle to see exactly. Right. 
Eubanks going for the big shot. He's looking for that right hand. But Choma's still making a miss. There's a, a wild, tired look about some of Eubanks' punches. It looks as if it's been tremendously hard work for him. He said, don't worry about me losing the weight. But I think it's shown here, don't you? I think it has. He's had to he's, pace it. He's, he's slow off the mark. He certainly laboured in this fight. He hasn't been sharp. He, the right hand has been badly out of distance at times. He thinks he was being pulled on. And that sometimes is a sign of distress signals there when fighters start complaining about fouls. Are we watching the end of Chris Eubanks' reign? Shoma may have done enough here. Yes, you feel if he if he can muster up, if he can bring from his boots a big finish, it'll be enough to, to win him this fight. They both look pretty tired in this last round. Oh, as witnessed there, that was just a slip over, no knockdown. Eubank, of course, has been involved in so many hairline decisions in the past. Maybe eight or nine of his previous fights. Eubank looks very tired. He's needed to raise it in this last round. He hasn't really done that. He's still trying to goad Schomer in to make mistakes. And Schomer isn't having any of it. It's been a very good performance by the American nobody would ever heard of. Eubank trying to finish fast, looking for a right uppercut. It's over. And if you want this observer's opinion, Eubank has lost his title. But, and it's a big but, have the judges seen it the same way? Shoma believes he's won it. Well, what do you think, Glenn? I think Shoma has done enough to win. It was a, a good boxing performance. He, he used his brain. He didn't get suckered into anything crazy. And Eubank looked very tight at the end, and he couldn't raise himself. It was a very smart fight from Shoma. There was a real old row about... Eubanks fight a couple of fights ago against Maurizio Amaral when most of the press thought that Eubank had lost. I must say, I thought he won that fight. Tonight, I don't think he's won the fight. But is he going to be the beneficiary of the judges again? My scorecard has Shoma the winner by two rounds. Uh, that is only my reading of it. Glenn feels roughly the same way. He's got it one round. One round to Shoma. Two judges from Puerto Rico and one from South Africa. Are we about to witness one of the great upsets? Has Eubank been beaten for the first time in his 42nd fight, in his 18th World Championship fight? He's got to be worried about it. He looks pretty subdued. Probably asking one or two people what they think. I wonder if we might get a draw. Would be a surprise. <laughs> and who holds on to the title if it's a draw? Eubank will do. That's what will happen. But um, Schomer has certainly forced his way to the forefront of the picture. This now is fascinating. We await the decision. There is great tension around this Super Bowl in Sun City. It was a pretty lethargic performance from Eubank. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have scored the fight as follows. Judge Kunidas Falu scores the fight. 116-114. One, 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 Judge Alfred Bakwana scores the fight. 117-113. One, 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 Judge Jose Rivera scores the fight. 
116-113 to the winner by unanimous decision and still well there is going to be enormous controversy about this Eubank has got it again by four points three points and two points from it has to be said the contentious WBO judges um, and I will repeat Glenn McCrory and I thought he lost it like the, uh, certainly I definitely couldn't say how he'd won it, it was a close fight but he, I think he felt himself that he hadn't done enough he didn't look a happy man at the end of the fight and Des Sengu is doing the honours with the old buck belt once again we must thank immensely black like me and in particular Herman well, Shaba for sponsoring there we go tonight. again it's another debatable one for Chris Eubank and he really had to work for that. But Eubank, according to the judges, and they're the ones that count, has retained his title in his 13th defense and goes on to fight again in December. Well, here is Chris Eubank. Chris, it was another contentious one, another close one. Tell us what you thought. Did you think you won that? Um, I'll have to see it on tape. He hit me with a lot of shots. I think the judges scored it in my favor because of my aggression. Um, you have American judges. It's subjective uh, scoring. He was catching me good shots on the way in. Really good shots. I couldn't get out of his uh, right hand range. Kept on catching me. I'll give him all the credit in the world. If they would have scored it a draw, if they would have given him a win, I wouldn't have complained because uh, he caught me good. But I understand how the judges uh, score fights and they basically saw me the winner, I think, because of my aggression. I kept on going forward. I kept on calling him in and I kept on, I kept on taking the fight to him. But all the credit in the world to him, you know. The press in England, they wrote him off. They did, you know, he's 31 to know this guy. It's a good thing I didn't take him lightly. I mean, I did train very hard out here for the three weeks. Um, I acclimatized well. Um, it's still, I still felt the pace. And I had to basically go to war because of his fighting style. He, his southpaw stance did have been difficulty tonight. But, you know, such is life. Live to fight another day, you know. I have to be honest with you, Glenn McCrory and I scoring it at ringside, we thought that Schoenberg had won the fight. Having said that, a couple of the leading boxing riders, Colin Hart of the Sun, Srikuma Sen from the Times, they thought that you'd won. So it was that close. It went either way. Now, just tell me, now, let me tell, ask you something, Chris, because you've come under a bit of fire in the press mm -hmm. back home this week. They say you've lost too much weight too quickly. Do you think you're riding a bit close to the line these days with your preparation? No, I don't. For the last five years, I've been doing my weight the same way. Um, um, there's nothing wrong with the way I do my weight. I think it's right. Don't take anything away from Dan Schoenmer tonight. He fought a brilliant fight. You underestimated him back at home. When I say you, the media, they didn't give him the credit what he deserved. He was a very good boxer. He knew how to stay out of range. I was too strong for him on the inside. I knew that, and that's why he kept on backing off. And I think that's the reason the judges gave me the fight. I think it's because of my aggression. That's do you think he deserves think. a rematch? Yes, he does. He certainly does. You shouldn't have wrote him off. I didn't write him off. This guy was a very good fighter. He was undefeated in 31 fights. He's uh, one, one loss now in 32 fights. And he deserves a rematch. I don't take nothing away from him. I'm, never, I'm always going to give you the honest truth. He put up a good fight. If he would have got the decision, I wouldn't have been complaining. Purely because he put up a bloody good fight. And uh, there's nothing I can say. I mean, his, his skills were, were good. He, he kept out of range. He boxed correctly. He boxed me correctly. Let's call in Barry Hearn there. Barry, um, was a stupid question to ask you how you scored it. Oh. But what did you think of Chris's performance there? Give us your honest opinion. Well, I think we, we knew Shoma was going to be awkward. We didn't know about the altitude, who had adjusted the best. Shoma did what we thought. He was hard to tag. And I have to tell you that I had Shoma one round ahead on my card at the end of the fight. So that doesn't surprise you. Maybe that means he was more ahead. I don't know. But, you know, we knew he was going to be a tough fight. It's very galling to read the papers they wrote off these guys without really studying. The boxing writers don't study the fights and they don't study fighters. Shoma was a real threat. We said that. And now, of course, it's December the 10th. You know, excuse me to plug now, I'm still working. Tickets go on sale on Monday. Henry Walton at the GMEX Centre. And after that fight, you know, which was a hard, hard fight for Chris again, you know, what price Walton now? It's going to be explosive because the two of them are going to come forward. So Henry Walton, at least I'm giving Chris an orthodox fighter back because he's had a run of southpaws now. You know, there's no point in kidding ourselves. He doesn't handle southpaws well. That's a straight, that's a fact of life. Unfortunately, there's seven in the top ten a southpaws, so you can't avoid them. But we've had our run of southpaws now, two or three in the last four fights. Henry Walton is orthodox. Henry Walton's a tough guy. It's going to be a great fight. We'll see you then on December the 10th. Has to be said that Walton has to come through a Commonwealth title defence um, first. But if that fight does go ahead, Chris, how do you see it? Um, I'm confident. 
um, about that fight. Um, it'll be it's a long time since um, I've had like two or three consecutive uh, um, orthodox fighters on the turn. I've got to get used to them again. Um, I, I, you know, I, I never look forward to the fights. It's all hard work. I'm making a lot of money. I'm earning my money. Um, I went through the pain barrier again tonight. I had to dig deep. Um, controversy is never far from Chris Eubank. I don't know why, but such is life, you know. Karen, coming home. I'll be, I'll be on a plane tomorrow night. Here we are. It was another knife-edge win. Some of us thought he lost, others thought he won. The judges, they're the ones that matter. They had Eubank still champion. When Eubank eventually arrived, it was to tell us that he'd missed his plane by some two minutes and had had to hire a private jet. Where are we going, but that didn't bother him. What he wanted to apologise for was his dress sense. Let me apologise for being dressed um, improperly. Usually I would have worn a suit. I had a suit, but I was told I had to come straight into the press conference. It's unfortunate because it's probably the finest suit of clothes you probably would have ever seen. <laughs> Eubank had been quoted in the press as saying this fight with Wharton was easy lolly. It was something that he quickly wanted to refute. I, I must re-emphasise the fact that when I said easy lolly, I was being jocular, OK? I know it starts the, um, the PR machine rolling and, you know, people say, well, he's still as uh, arrogant as he used to be. I um, understand categorically it was said I was being facetious. All fights are hard fights. All fights. All these fellows who are in the top ten in the world are hard to beat. Um, if I don't train, if I don't have fear, if I don't have respect um, for my opponents, inevitably I will end up losing somewhere along the line. Um, now, Henry Wharton could be that person I lose to. I guarantee that it will not be. Strong words indeed from Chris Eubank, but Henry Wharton is not the slightest bit deterred by this first stage in the battle of wits. Yeah, it's all mind games, you know, and he's experienced with doing things like that, but, you know, I'm not going to let him get to me. You know, I'm looking forward to win the championship that night, and I'm doing what I do best. I'm not letting him do what he does. You know, I'm doing what I do best, and that's the way I've got to do it. Wharton was certainly talking a good fight. One thing the Eubank camp can rely on is his huge army of fans. 85% of the people there are going to be Wharton supporters, which is good. He loves a crowd against him. And he's, he's, Eubanks is a natural rebel. Well, I've, known him, I've been with him nearly seven years now. And um, the, best, the best way to get things out of Eubanks is let him be the rebel. You must let him have his hand. He must be the rebel. He mustn't, if he's got him a plate, he's not the same person. He's got to be fighting against things all the time. That's his way. I've got good support, and I appreciate them supporting. That's like yeah. an added thing for me. But I think they appreciate the way I fight, you know, I'm a, I'm a genuine fight, I'll have a go. I'm prepared to take shots and come back from the death, you know, and, and keep fighting. I like a crowd against me. That's a good provocation. Especially when, you, when you're fighting someone who is not a strategic thinking fighter, as Henry Wharton isn't. I know he's careful, he's very careful, he's world champion. But right now, I'm going to be world champion. I'm not going to let nobody take that away from me, you know, against... Agile Ben and things, you know, that was uh, like a learning process in my, my career, you know, he beat me fair and square, but this time, it's my time, I've got to take over now. But can he? Do join us on Sky Sports to find out. It's official, the WBO World Super Middleweight